the AAS show in New York at the Barefoot booth with Thomas Barefoot, who's going to tell us about the MM26. How you doing? So, Thomas, <laughs> what's it all about? Yeah, so the, when I start talking about the MM26, I usually what I do is I start talking about the MM27 first. And the, the, the concept behind the MM27 was that it was effectively, it's effectively a two-way speaker. You know, the way it works, it's a, it's a two-way near field. But it's, it has all these extra drivers, and what those extra drivers are doing is really supporting that two-way platform. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's this Uber two-way near field with that, with that, that does things no two-way near field could have ever done. You know, it has all this dynamic range, deep bass response, you know, all the, all the things that, that the MM27 is. And you're achieving that with these extra drivers on the side. Yeah, so, so it's so, you know, for all intent, like I say, you know, it's, it's, the, it's a two-way near field but now you've got subs integrated. Mm -hmm. the, everything is, is, the idea is to integrate everything so seamlessly that you, that you it behaves like a two-way, it translates like a two-way. So it, in a sense, it's sort of traditional, mm -hmm. but the radical thing is, is making this two-way that, that has this huge dynamic range, has this deep bass response, mm -hmm. all these things. That's kind of the, you know, the radicalness of what, what it right, was. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, in that sense, the, the 27, has a bit of a, a traditional aspect to it. The, the 26, actually it started as a, as a center channel. The, the original um, data sets that are out there are actually labeled MM27C. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was designed as a center channel for, for surround systems. But then we started listening to it in, in stereo and it's like, okay, well this, you know, this is a pretty special speaker and it, and it really deserves a, you know, a, a model number of its own. And, and you know the difference therefore between the, the the 27 and and the 26 is kind of like if you think of this as sort of this uber two-way this is now like an uber three-way you know it's, okay. it's really it is a true full you know um, four-way speaker so separate frequency bands for each individual um, you know the subs the mid bases the mids and the tweeter um, so it's it's it, it's translating and behaving as if it were a small three-way, you know, that with with all this extra low end. Uh, so it's still a near field. It's a it's a little, you know, in, in presentation and translation, it's a three-way. It's got this amazing uh, depth in the mid range and transparency that I think is really wonderful. Um, but it's you know it's it's just a di it's a different flavor, mm. a different you know take on what the 27 is doing. So. So with the 26, then, do you want to talk us through some of what the drivers are doing and what the principles are? So, uh, I mean, you start out with the subs. Of course, you know, it's the dual opposing subs uh, that, that, you know, kind of made the, one of the things that kind of made the 27 famous. Uh, uh, the idea is that there's, um, there are two active uh, sealed box subwoofers, very fast transit response. The, the motor su systems inside the subs are locked together. Mm -hmm. So you actually, uh, they're, they're moving out, moving in at the same time. The, the forces that they're exerting are actually canceled out because of the drivers are locked together. So you have all this, you know, relatively up in your face if you're using them as, as near fields. You have all this energy, but the energy is extremely well controlled. The cabinets are rock solid. There's no vibrations being emitted from the, from the subs or anything like that. Those cross over at 100 hertz to the, to the woofers. Um, and uh, it's the same, same woofers that are in the, the 27. I, I built every driver is built to work beyond the range that I actually use it in. Sure. So these things are, can actually go flat out to 10 kilohertz. That's why um, in the 27, when, when, with the mix cube emulation, it's only the one bottom mid bass. So that, and that is working like as if it were a, a full range mix cube. Okay. And this is the same way, but, it's, but now these are sequestered down to, uh, they only go up to 600 hertz, and then they cross over to this to the mid-range. So again, okay. they're, they're drivers that have capabilities mm -hmm. far beyond what they're doing, and I, and I like that because I, I want every speaker to be working as little as possible, because when it's, when it's not breaking a sweat, mm -hmm. it's not distorting, it's, you know, it's able to push the air that it needs to push and do it in an extremely linear way. And then it moves up to the two, two and a half inch um, mid. The mid, again, is it's an aluminum cone mid, it can go flat out to 20 kilohertz, mm -hmm. but it's only going up to 4K in the speaker. So again, it's this right. idea that it's in, it, in its frequency band, it works as a perfect piston. There's, um, you know, there, yeah, it's just a, a seamless, extraordinarily transparent driver. 
and then that crosses over at four kilohertz to the um, dual ri ring radiator uh, tweeter. Has amazing um, wide dispersion because of the because of the um, the ring radiator source and the uh, waveguide. So it has uh, even beyond 15 kilohertz. It's it's uh, you know has this amazingly wide sweet spot, very low distortion, all the kind of things that we just overkill after overkill after overkill <laughs> is the idea. And uh, these are powered then, are they? They are. In fact, um, a lot of the tech things that are going on inside of the speaker, I mean, the speaker essentially has to be inactive. They, yeah. I couldn't build this thing if it weren't active. So Sure. Um, and so is there a lot of DSP going on? There is, um, I mean, there's a, I, what I, the way I think of DSP is I, I'm just using it to do the same kind of things I would do in the analog domain, but do them in, in, a, in, in such a precise way uh, and tailor the phase response and, and all these kind of things in a way that that would be virtually impossible to do in, in the analog domain. But I'm not, but it has a very powerful DSP engine, but it's not like I'm doing all this processing. The processing is really about building extremely transparent filters and, and all that sort of thing. So it's, it's a, like a lot okay. of power, but a lot of power in a sense of being Seamless and, and used responsibly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then, and then some of the headroom. Uh, we actually have a little bit of headroom left on the DSP, and that was what kind of brought on this speaker emulation. I've got this Uber speaker. Um, got really tired and jealous of seeing those NS10s <laughs> parked beside my speakers. So I was like, well, NS10 can't do what what my speakers can do, but I can't actually make my speakers do what an NS10 does and a mix cube and all that sort of thing. So. So you have what different modes you can switch into yeah, using different and, drivers and that kind of thing. Right, and uh, and the idea is that you know I'm not trying to perfectly. I can't say I can perfectly replicate an NS10, but um, or a, or a mix cube. But I, I do think it it captures the essential essence of what those speakers do, and that you would make the same decisions on mm -hmm. on those modes as you would yeah. on those other speakers. And and. Still, and, and you're not sacrificing. You have the flat mode. You have mm -hmm. what you expect from a barefoot speaker. I, 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 it's not a scientific study or anything, but uh, I'd say you know 50-50. Uh, half of the customers say never touch it, never use it, never you know it sits, sits in a box somewhere, and then other people are like, I love it, can't live without it. Mm -hmm. And so either way, I'm happy. You know what I mean? The, and they can be used uh, on their side or upright. They can. They? You know, I mean. Generally, the 27 is sort of intended to be a vertical speaker. The 26 is intended to be horizontal. But there's nothing to say that you can't flip them either way. If it works in your room, if it works, yeah. you know, it it's, does narrow up the sweet spot a bit, you know, uh, horizontally. You know, we're terrestrial beings. We kind of move side to side more than we do <laughs> up and down. So you sure. so you want the wider dispersion typically in, in the horizontal field. But, uh, but if that's not how you work or if, if you've got peculiarities in your room that make the the opposite, you know, the, the other orientation work for you, then I say go for it. So how much are these going to cost and when are they going to be available? These are um, 12,500 US and okay. uh, they're going to start shipping, I'm saying end of November, early December for sure. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Thomas. Thanks.